G'day, welcome back to The Lion Lawn. Uh, if this is your first time here, thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, feel free to go back and check out my previous videos to get a uh, better understanding of what the channel's about. Uh, basically, it's uh, in, a, in a very short version is I'm doing a lawn renovation uh, using only battery powered um, lawn equipment. So go and check out the other videos and get yourself up to speed. Uh, if you've been watching for a while now, thanks for coming back. Uh, you may remember the end of my last video, I put down a heap of plant doctor um, fertilizers and, and bits and pieces because the lawn was starting to look really, really good. Uh, unfortunately though, the day that I did that, uh, when I finished filming that video, uh, while I was uh, up cooking dinner for the family, um, nature decided to deliver us uh, some slow release irrigation in the form of one of the worst hailstorms I've ever seen in my life. Um, and it absolutely hammered my uh, my property, my lawns, my garden, everything. Um, could have been much worse. We didn't lose the roof of our house like some people around us. And, uh, you know, we had trees down over fences everywhere out here. Um, lots of people lost windows and cars and all that sort of stuff. So it was it was quite nasty. But thankfully, it was only my, uh, my yard that really copped it. My poor old ute out on the driveway got hammered. But I've since had that assessed. And uh, it looks like they're going to repair it, which is good. Uh, but I'll chuck some uh, videos and photos up now so you can see what I mean by slow release irrigation. It literally was uh, a couple of inches of ice covering my entire property. So check that out now and uh, let me know what you think. So as you can see, it was quite full on. Um, it was very scary, actually. As I said, my uh, my wife and my daughter and, and Dexter, our puppy, we uh, just sort of huddled in the lounge room away from all the windows while it was going on, hoping that uh, we didn't have any broken glass and, and whatnot. It lasted about nine or 10 minutes in that um, full on big golf ball sized hail. So it was actually quite scary. But um, as you can see, the lawn and the garden copped an absolute flogging. So I was very, <laughs> Worried that all the hard work that I'd done was going to be for nothing. Um, a lot of my sand that was still on the, the top of the, the lawn washed away, as you can imagine. Uh, and I imagine that none of the chemicals that I'd applied that day uh, got a chance to do anything before they ended up five or six houses down the hill. So um, since that happened, we've been cleaning up a fair bit over the, the, the days following that. We, um, we were lucky enough that the local council, I mean, it was declared, a, um, I think it was declared a, a natural disaster. So the council kicked in a couple of extra, um, you know, green waste cleanups and that sort of stuff. So we we're able to get rid of all the branches and the trees and pull out all the plants and get rid of them. Um, I mowed the grass quite a few times trying to clean up all the leaf litter that had blown in. Um, the effects of that, however, are starting to show themselves. I've got a heap of weeds that I've never seen before that have uh, germinated this last week or so. Uh, and I'm not sure whether it was um, just laying dormant after I used the Casper, but it looks like some of the clovers come back. So I'm going to have to get out there and give that another hit to try and clean that up. But all in all, um, the grass did recover. Um, it's starting to look really good. I've got good coverage. Uh, if you've been checking my Instagram, you'll see that um, I've been cutting it at 13 mil with the Victor push mower for the time being. Uh, and I even got some, um, some baby stripes out of the push mower, which was pretty cool. Um, so the backyard's coming along nicely. The side yard um, is quite, it was the, um, the side of the house where the hail was hitting the hardest. So the side yard's absolutely trashed with uh, weeds and all sorts of stuff that blew in there that's, that's growing everywhere. So I'm trying to get on top of that. Uh, and the front yard's not too bad. Um, it took a fair bit of cleaning up, but the front yard's always been much slower to, to grow. Um, so it's, it's getting there. The, the, the grass seed that I put in the, uh, the old garden bed, that's germinated now and it's growing quite nicely. I'll take you out there in a minute and give you a look at that. Um, but today the plan is uh, to give it a hit with the mower again. 
Uh, and then, so today's Friday, the 5th of November. Um, on Sunday, we've got a, a family uh, do here at the house, so I'd like the place to look nice for them. So I'm going to give it a hit with the mower, and then depending on what the weather's doing, because surprise, surprise, it's raining, um, I might do an iron application, but we'll see how we go. So I'll take you out now and show you the grass, and um, we'll get stuck in. As you can see, it's starting to fill in quite nicely. Not much sand showing now, and the grass has filled in over the gaps that were bare. Um, I'll take you up to the corner where it was the worst. You can see it's starting to fill in nicely here. Um, this is where Dexter runs around the corner of the house, so it's always going to get trashed. But there's actually grass there, which is good. So given that we've got a break in the weather, I might get the push cylinder out and give it a, a run over and um, hopefully it starts to look much nicer and if it dries up a little bit I'll put some of the liquid iron on um, if not it is actually looking pretty green anyway except for the um, the light spots where the other types of grasses are growing back through it um, and also the spots where the dog takes a whiz um, I have been using dog rocks for that and they're working really well but it must be time to refresh them because it's uh, it's starting to burn in again so I'll get the mower out and um, give it a hit and catch up with you in a sec. Two reasonably good catcher loads off the back, that's pretty good. Now going to do the opposing direction, so we get a good double cut. Hopefully make it a bit more even, and um, it's looking pretty good, considering the drama it went through last week, but it's going pretty good. now raining because what would a Lion Lord episode be without the rain? I'm lucky in the sense that I've got this cheap um, cylinder mower because you really shouldn't mow with a cylinder mower over that much sand I suppose because it's going to blunt the blades um, which I'm not too worried about this one because it's sort of the whole reason I have it uh, but what I'll do is I'll hose it off let it dry and see how it goes but at some stage in the future I do plan to have a crack at sharpening it myself so hopefully I'll keep all my fingers but um, yeah so I'll clean it up now and pack him away. Speaking of the equipment that I'm using, um, some people have uh, noticed that I'm still using the 18 volt uh, Ryobi whip snipper around here, which I think it's a great little unit, um, but uh, it's certainly getting on a bit in age. I've had it a couple of years now. Um, but you know, there are other options out there, specifically the 36 volt. Uh, and this week I managed to secure myself one, second hand, but still in really good nick, 36 volt power head. Um, and with it, I got a bench shaft, line trimmer, and the um, the edger, the garden edger. So I'll be able to run it down the driveway and down the, the long side of the house there. Um, but specifically, I wanted this 36 volt um, unit because if I can get a straight line, a straight edge um, attachment for it, I want to get one of those rotary scissor attachments that you see people using at the moment. They look pretty handy. Um, and I think there's one that you can attach to 
the Ryobi. So um, two birds with one stone, more powerful whippersnipper for the time being, and then hopefully I can convert it to a um, whoo, convert it to a um, set of rotary scissors so that I can do the edges a little bit uh, more neater, a bit more tidy without chucking stuff everywhere. Because the one thing I did notice with this, it, uh, it chucks up a lot of that sand. It's like sandblasting your shins. So, um, but that's all right. I wear long pants most of the time. I'm not too worried. Um, so I'll give this a quick whip around now and tidy up, take you out the front and show you the damage that the uh, storm has done out there and uh, keep on keeping on. side now you can see down here one of those monster tread marks where the uh, truck came to pick up the skip hasn't really recovered as well but um, the hail was was coming in this direction just pounding this fence so everything along here just got absolutely covered in weeds and leaf litter and obviously hail so but it's not too bad it's coming along I'm not gonna mow it today um, because it's still not at that stage yet where it needs it as often as the back but it's getting there it's getting there it's pretty good Tell you what there's some junk in it though like this whole section of just winter grass up here and um just the weeds it's just totally trashed but what do you do what do you do i suppose uh i probably put the clip in earlier but me uh the poor old soko has got absolutely hammered so i'll have to get a new one of those after i finally got the solution for this section of grass of course the hail wrecks it but uh that's all right it's a couple of soko hoses not too bad but this is the front how it's coming along it's getting there, it's getting pretty good. Still a lot of sand for it to um, push through, but uh, the seed that I put down in this garden bed has started to germinate and grow. Now someone might be able to tell me, but I think that's just rye grass. They must put in with the kaikuyu seed um, to sort of protect it a little bit as it starts to grow someone may be able to correct me on that but I think that's what it is it looks a bit different to the kike um, but either way something's growing there and it's starting to look better than it did so I'm very very happy it's coming along nice all right back in the shed uh, I was just looking up what best to do about the liquid iron that I want to put down a um, bit of conflicting information about whether to do it you know some four to six hours before rain at minimum others saying it's all right to do it before rain i don't really want to waste it so it's not supposed to rain tomorrow so i might end the video or i might finish up for today here and then uh, pick up again tomorrow if it's not raining tomorrow i'll uh, i'll get the camera out and tack this on to the end of it uh, do an application and uh, get some photos from as is and then we'll see how long it takes for any changes uh, if any uh, to pop up and see how we go so i will catch you in the morning G'day, I'm back. We have beautiful blue sky, beautiful day. Grass is looking uh, really good this morning. So uh, I'm gonna put that iron down. Uh, we're not supposed to get rain again now until um, midday tomorrow. So hopefully that's enough time for it to do what it needs to do and get itself activated. Uh, so I'm going to use Plant Doctor's liquid iron. Uh, this one says 150 to 400 mils per 100 meters squared. Seems like a long um, spread there, so I might go with sort of the minimum. So I'll put probably 220, 225 mils in to do my 150 squares here. Um, I won't do the side yard or the front yard because like I said, the, the grass is still sorting itself out there, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Um, so 225 mils of this into 10 liters of water. I'll put it down in both directions. So basically left and right and then an up and down. and. Uh, take a couple of photos and then in the next video we'll compare what the colour looks like to see if it's made any difference. With any of these sort of things you want to uh, make sure you give them a good shake first to uh, get all the, all the bits mixed in before you put them into your tank and then obviously give your tank a good mix as well. Um, I'm led to believe that liquid iron can 
make like a rusty stain on concrete and fences and stuff so you want to avoid any overspray if you can or if you do get overspray probably uh, hose it off straight away unless you want that uh, <laughs> rusty patina look on your creamy colored colorbond fence so all right That's 225. And then I'll give that a bit of a shake. We're good to go. up there too because I can't imagine rust stains on a white Dalmatian is a good thing. that done so that's the first time I've sprayed that product or any liquid iron product so we'll uh, we'll see how it goes it's uh, 11 30 in the morning clear blue skies beautiful sunny day so I'll take some photos now and then if we get similar weather conditions in sort of two or three days um, I'll try and come out at the same time same conditions take another couple of photos with the same settings and uh, and see if we can see a difference I reckon I'll be able to see a difference with my eye but whether or not photos show it or not is uh, something we'll just have to wait and see so uh, thank you for watching if you stuck around this long um, thanks for that if you're not subscribed please subscribe otherwise I will catch you next time on the line lawn <laughs>